Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark with Thailand Unplugged, back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up today. Travel-starved passengers dine on a Park Singapore Airlines jet to get their travel fix. Chinese Alibaba-owned Lazada has been hacked. So if you've dealt with Lazada before, you're probably buying things you don't know about. Will Thailand be changed forever due to the current unrest? Let's take a look at that. China's Silk Road Initiative for China's high-speed rail progressing nicely. The Philippines Communist Party, once ally with the Chinese Communist Party, told to attack Chinese interests in the Philippines. Japan helped from bullying by Chinese Communist Party in the South China Sea. Once again, I'm Stephen Clark. Those and other stories coming up from the land of smiles and Southeast Asia. Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. Travel starved passengers dine on a park to Singapore Airlines jet. Hundreds of travel starved diners ate lunch and watched seat back films aboard two parked Singapore Airlines jets, turning into pop-up restaurants. As with the aviation industry in deep turmoil due to the Chinese coronavirus, airlines have turned to alternative ways to raise cash, from offering flights to nowhere to grand tours of stationary aircraft. Now, Singapore's flag carrier, which has cut thousands of jobs and grounded nearly all of its planes this year, offered passengers the chance to dine on board two A380 Super Jumbos, the world's biggest passenger jet. More than 400 diners checked into Shanghai Airport went through the usual security checks before arriving at the aircraft for lunch. The food is pretty amazing. It's better than the one they served during the flight, one passenger was heard screaming. Some settled in for a nap while waiting for their meals to be served while others watched movie on the seats back entertainment system. About half the seats were left empty, in keeping with social distancing guidelines. The most expensive option is a $642 eight-course meal in first-class suit, while the cheapest cost of $53 and consisted of three-course meal in economy class. A limited number of diners are also able to tour the double-decker aircraft and take selfies with the pilot in the cockpit. Tarmac meals proved surprisingly popular. The airline announced six additional sessions after more than 900 lunch tickets sold out within 30 minutes of bookings opening earlier this month. The airline is also offering home deliveries of plain meals, but it has ditched the plans to flights to nowhere short journey starting and ending at the same airport, following an outcry over the potential environment impact. <laughs> Maybe they were doing simulated crash landings. <laughs> Chinese Alibaba-owned Lazada suffers a data hack of 1.1 million accounts. Singapore e-commerce firm Lazada said on Friday that a personal information including addresses, partial credit card numbers from 1.1 million accounts has been hacked. This is a major breach in a city with 5.7 million people in it. The Chinese Alibaba owned firm said in an email that the information was taken from a database of its grocery arm Redmart. That was more than 18 months out of date. The user information was illegal accessed included names, phone numbers, emails, mailing addresses, encrypted passwords and partial credit card numbers, a spokesman for a Chinese Alibaba-owned Lazada said. Well, basically I think he's trying to say they got everything. The firm said it had immediately moved to block the access to the database and that its current customer's database was not infected. Ah. Oh, that's wonderful. I really feel like shopping at Lazada now. Handing over my credit card number with my address and phone number on it. I really do feel like shopping there now. I've actually bought a lot of things from Lazada in the past and had them delivered in Thailand with no problem at all. And I'm safe in the knowledge that some outside party's got my address, credit card number, telephone number, everything about me. 
and Lazada let somebody take it. So what, your current customer's data was not infected? Oh, I see. It makes me feel so warm inside. I want to rip out my credit card and start using Lazada at the moment. Or maybe I'll just put me details all over the internet so everybody can use my card. China Thai High Speed Railway progressing well to boost regional economy for the whole area. And of course, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. China and Thailand reportedly signed a contract section 2.3 with the investment of 1.6 billion US dollars for the first phase of the Chinese High Speed Railway, the flagship project jointly promoting the Belt and Road Initiative, in line with the upgrading infrastructure construction as well as economic development in Thailand. Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs commented on the new contract. The project, part of China's planned network of rail links crossing Southeast Asia, that would eventually connect Kunming in southwest China with Singapore, was delayed in 2006 when Thailand rejected China's financing due to high interest rates. Thailand will shoulder the total construction costs of US 5.85 billion for the first phase with China responsible for installing system designs and procuring the trains. The project will link Thailand's capital city of Bangkok and Nikon Ratchasima, better known as Krat in northeastern Thailand. According to Chinese embassy in Thailand, it also said the contract marked a significant step in the progress of the Chinese Thai high-speed rail project for the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. The construction is worth about 10.9 billion yen, 163 billion US dollars, for the Bangkok Nikon Ratchasima section of the route. It said the Thai Chinese high speed for the Belt and Road Initiative Rail project is expected to be completed by 2025. After the completion of the project, it will improve Thailand's infrastructure and enhance connection between Thailand and its neighbouring countries, boosting regional economic development and benefits people in China as well as Southeast Asia, said the Chinese embassy in Thailand. The 253-kilometre route from Bangkok to Khorat has six stations. Bangsu Grand, Dongmyang, Yutia, Surabari, Pak Chao and Nikon Ratchasima. The train will run at speeds of up to 250 kilometres per hour. China is responsible for the design of the railway, supervision and construction, manufacturing of the train and signal system. Among other things, in the spirit of wide consultation, joint construction and shared benefit. Sharing benefits with China? That'd be very interesting. Like their sharing of the Mekong River and the 11 massive dams they have constructed. Leaving Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam without water. Or perhaps their sharing of the South China Sea and China claiming all of it. Is this how China shares? The outlawed Philippine Communist Party directed its armed forces to target Chinese companies involved in infrastructure projects including state-backed firms that the United States has blacklisted for their part in Beijing's militarization in the South China Sea. The Communists announced the move six weeks after the Philippine government their enemy for the past half a century declared that it would not follow Washington's lead by cutting ties with firms involved in Chinese building of artificial islands, military installations in the disputed waterways. In a statement, the Communist Party of Philippines did not name the Chinese firms, but said they were involved in the construction of Chinese installations and in the plunder and destruction of Philippines marine resources in the West Philippine Sea, violating Philippines sovereignty. The West Philippine Sea is how Filipinos refer to the South China Sea. Some of these Chinese companies are involved in some big ticket infrastructure projects, not only displacing thousands of peasants and minorities from their lands, they also wreak havoc on the natural ecosystem of the country's remaining forests, the Philippines Communist Party added. 
asked if this meant the Chinese firms would be targeted by the Philippines Communist Party. Group spokesmen said they and their arms and security are targets. The Philippines Communist Party, whose forces today compromised 5,000 fighters scattered in different parts of the Philippines. In a statement, the Chinese Communist Party said it was ordering all of its guerrilla units to mount a more frequent tactical offensive against the Chinese firms. They said use all possible types of weapons, from rifles, command detonated explosives, to spears, punji sticks, against the enemy, the Communist Party of the Philippines stated. Cambodia's security guards broke up a small protest on Friday near the Chinese embassy, opposing alleged plans to boost Beijing's military presence in the country, as police detained some demonstrators for questioning. We reject the Chinese military presence in Cambodia, shouted one protester, waving a Cambodian flag, as police officers with loud hailers gave the group five minutes to disperse. The Cambodian government has repeatedly denied reports that China had reached a secure deal to let it place forces at the Reem naval base, saying that hosting foreign forces would be against Cambodia's constitution. So what's the big deal? The Cambodian naval base will give them easy access to the Straits of Malacca and give the Chinese Communist Party access to the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. The Chinese Communist Party supported the last government of Cambodia, Khmer Rouge, when it murdered a quarter of its population. The Chinese Communist Party has set up naval base in Djibouti, which they claimed as being a naval base, which they previously claimed they would not turn into a naval base. They have also set up naval bases in Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Myanmar, which they claim will not be used as naval bases. They have set up artificial islands in on other countries' sovereign territory claiming they would only do scientific research and would not turn them into military bases. They've also installed large runways that can take domestic planes or nuclear bombers if you like and a nice array of missiles for fishing purposes of course. Anyway, Phnom Penh's police spokesman said that detainees had been taken for questioning since the rally had not been given a permit. We need to protect the Chinese Communist Party embassy and keep public order for all people, they said. Earlier, police officials at the scene had told some journalists to delete pictures and videos of the altercation, according to witnesses. Cambodia is among Asia's poorest nations, has been an important ally to China in recent years, and has been accused of giving Beijing influence in return for economical support. But Cambodia has insisted its foreign and security policies is independent. The Chinese Communist Party's embassy did not immediately respond to requests for comments. The young protesters taking on the monarchy at the moment are going to change Thailand forever. Over the past few months, the monarchy reform protesters have staged protests week after week. The dissolution of the Future Forward Party, hugely popular amongst young voters in February, alienated many of the young Thais, spurring them on to seek change outside the parliament system. Hundreds gathered at the Democracy Monument in Bangkok after Aaron Napa, the Penguin, as he's finally called, a human rights lawyer and public activist, publicly called on reform of the monarchy in August. Protesters resisted police in the riot gear using the high-pressure water cannon, laced with chemical irritants and blue dye to identify the protesters. At least a dozen were arrested, as were around 60 more in subsequent protests. At the heart of the protest, demands has been not their call for the immediate resignation of the Prime Minister, General Priyat Chinachar, a former junta leader who staged a coup in 2014, or the drafting of a new democratic constitution, but the desire to reform the Thai monarchy. Unlike in the United Kingdom or Japan, the Thai public and press routinely censor themselves 
from stating anything mildly critical of the monarchy. Unlike in the United Kingdom or Japan, the Thai public and press routinely censor themselves from stating anything mildly critical of the monarchy. Now, negative news or information about the king is rarely aired, blocking any meaningful critical discussions of the monarchy. Yet, with the explosion of the social media and smartphones, users in recent years, the efficiency of the censorship has been arid. Thailand's mainstream media has been bypassed, and a number of Twitter users and Facebook groups now frequently disseminate information critical of the monarchy. This happens despite the less majest law which carries a maximum imprisonment term of 15 years per account. This new generation aged between 15 and 25 wants change. They do not want to inherit where fundamental rights such as freedom of expression are suspended in the name of reverence to the king. They want a new and freer Thailand where public criticism of the king or queen is, is not a crime but a fundamental right. They want to guarantee that the new king, Rama X, will not sign off at any more coups as his father, the previous king, Rama IX, did since 1932. He signed off on military coups on an average of every seven years since 1932. With the King Rama IX's net worth estimated at roughly $40 billion by the Financial Times this month, the Thai King is one of the richest monarchs in the world. Meanwhile, the minimum wage of a Thai worker is a mere $5 a day. Royalists and ultra-royalists, most not in their teens or in their 20s, but much older, have become increasingly hurt as their world order falls away before their eyes. To them, the monarchy is like a religion, a reference to a type of god, or at least a semi-divine figure in society where the dominant religion, Buddhism, doesn't have one. To the royalists, the monarchy is also a symbol of national unity and continuation. While it is still too early to call the revolt a success, it is irreversible. It's currently taking place in time and maybe it's time for the older generation to step aside and let young ties shape the Thailand tomorrow. One protester was heard saying, I don't fear for my life, I fear for the life of Thailand. Japan to help Asian states secure coasts amid China's South China Sea tensions. Tokyo has agreed to supply Southeast Asian governments with patrol boats, Indonesia, Vietnam in particular, so they can secure their coast amid tensions in the South China Sea because of the Chinese actions. Japan strongly supports preservation of the rule of law in international waters and is troubled by some recent activities by China and the South China Sea that go against maritime law. Japan will support measures against illegal fishing by Chinese fishermen, providing assistance in the form of patrol boats to Asian countries, including Indonesia and Vietnam. Peace and prosperity can be achieved in the region only if we implement the rule of law that allows everyone freedom of opinions. But there have been actions breaching this law by the Chinese in the South China Sea, and we are watching with concern. He said, apparently alluding to escalating Sino-US tensions over the contested waterway. Japan has seen an increase in Chinese fishing boats breaching their waterways, obviously under the command of the Chinese Communist Party. Japan has been ramping up its engagement in South Asia, especially by bolstering its defence and civilian ties with countries whose borders extend into the South China Sea. Indonesia does not call this area the South China Sea, they call it the Natuna Sea. The latest such incursion from Chinese fishing vessels took place in September in Indonesian exclusive economic zone. Indonesia has fired upon fishing vessels in their district. Also, they have just recently burnt 51 foreign boats to fight illegal fishing. Other countries with foreshores on the South China Sea, capturing the Chinese fishermen's boats and burning them to send a strong message to the Chinese Communist Party to stop ordering Chinese fishing boats into their territorial waters that China is now claiming as its own. Indonesia, Vietnam, the Philippines, also Brunei and Malaysia and Taiwan have territorial claims or maritime borders 
water ties in the South China Sea that overlap with the sweeping claims of the China. While Indonesia does not regard itself as part of the South China Sea dispute, Beijing claims historic rise to part of the sea that overlaps Indonesia's exclusive economical zone. And what China wants, China takes. They call it salami slicing a little bit at a time. They do it all over the world.